Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers and this morning I'm looking at a very interesting book involving European Union law, the treaties and where we are today at the end of 2014 as we prepare for a general election in 2015 with the big issue being the European Union. The book I'm looking at is this book here. I'll just show you it. It's a hardback. It's called EU Law and Integration. It's got a, a subtitle, 20 Years of Judicial Application of EU Law, and it's been written by um, a man, I do apologise if I spell this, um, actually pronounce his name incorrectly, um, Jose Luis de Cruz Valencia. I hope that's correctly uh, pronounced. That's the book anyway. It's not a big book. Runs to about 360 pages. It's got a dust cover. You can see there's an interesting commentary on the dust cover there. Um, there's the spine and then the back of the book. Then there's a li very small amount of information about the author there. The book itself is a very erudite book. Um, it's actually uh, got a very useful index which you can see at the back and then it's got as would be expected a lot of detailed footnotes and actual numbering uh, not numbering but lettering for subheads and it goes all the way through um, in a very detailed way looking at the various aspects of EU law integration and that's the main commentary at the front do have and then there's the the main bit there do have a look at the forward which is very interesting it's very well written it's written by his friend and his friend is called um kern lennertz and you can see his name at the bottom there then there's an acknowledgement section a table of contents split into various parts as you can see there then you've got <coughs> more parts there up to 17 and then there's the index at the back so there are 17 there are five parts 17 chapters part one starts with EU constitutional law and there are a series of important commentaries in this area of law now my wife and I have written a review of this book and um, we've given it the title attention all EU watchers here's a collection of articles to set the record straight on the judicial application of European Union law now what I've done is I've incorporated into this um, book, and I should have mentioned this by heart publishing, I've incorporated into it um, um, a lecture I attended recently, the Law Reform Committee 14th Annual Lecture, which was by uh, Professor Sir Francis Jacobs, who many of you will know, he was the, the former Advocate General of the uh, Court of Justice of the European Communities. Uh, but more about him at the end of the uh, review. What we say is this, to practitioners and lay people alike, the issue of European Union law can remain something of an enigma, especially with the current controversies bubbling around in the United Kingdom. The substantive law area itself has become an effective compulsory subject for law students and undergraduates, so the articles by um, José Luis da Cruz Velanja are to be welcomed for their insight into this perplexing and often controversial area. Writing in the foreword, his friend Kern uh, Lennart, who is Vice President of what I'm calling the ECJ, it's the, it's the Court of Justice in the European Union, but I call it the ECJ to make it easier, describes these articles from his friend as, quote, of great academic interest, in that it presents an overview of EU law that, despite covering a period that goes back more than 20 years, has lost none of its relevance. Lennart goes on to say that de Cruz Villaja also brings an enrichment of practical experience as a legal practitioner and member of the judiciary. These two attributes make this work of great importance as the UK goes through a tortuous period of self-doubt about the efficacy of the European Union itself and how it's working. All will be revealed, we hope, in 2015, when no doubt the issue of continued membership will reach a particular political plateau at the general election in May. Meanwhile, we have this most interesting and informative collection of diverse commentaries in five parts, which I've indicated, which 
cover EU constitutional law, the EU judicial architecture, individuals' access to justice, European competition law, and various other aspects of substantive EU law under the heading Studies on EU Law and Economic Integration. In view of the continuing discussions about whether any changes can be made to the treaties, it's worth remembering what the author puts forward. He writes that the powers of the Member States to amend the treaties is limited, quote, by the existence of a hard core of principles of <coughs> EU treaty law, <coughs> excuse me, which cannot be revised without changing the constitutional identity of the Union. He goes on to say that this leads to the conclusion that Member States can no longer be considered as the absolute masters of the treaties. Make what you will of that because you will be aware of the varying political views in the UK at the moment on that particular topic um, because of things, for instance, like the word renegotiation. Let me continue. Much of what the author says has been echoed recently by uh, Professor Sir Francis Jacobs in the 14th Annual Lecture of the Law Reform Committee, which was held at Inner Temple in November 2014, where Jacobs addressed the vexed issue of what he titled the European Courts in the UK, What Future? A New Role for the English Courts. That's available on the Bar Council website as a lecture, so you can read it if you want, and there's a lot in it, a very great help, I think, to undergraduates and law students generally. And what um, Sir Francis did was he specifically endorsed the point that uh, de Cruz Vallejo makes so that this issue will run for politicians. I mean, because obviously there was a major difference and he was clearly not trying to go into the political arena, but he had to make points about the validity itself of the treaties and how difficult, especially the convention, the European Convention on Human Rights, how very difficult things would be if there were any changes to be made. But we're going to look at that in much greater detail in 2015, I'm sure. Let me conclude by saying we leave the final word with Lennertz, who recommends this collection to readers, quote, who are looking for a work that covers a wide range of rich and varied ideas in the field of EU law. It does just that, so thank you very much indeed to all concerned. Let me just show you the book again. It's not a light book. It's a heavy book to read. Don't, don't think it's an easy book at all. That's the front. You can see here, Amicable Settlement of Proceedings. That's the title there, dealing with the single European Act and the setup of the uh, CFI. You remember probably Margaret Thatcher's views on the single European Act. Uh, so you've got to bear in mind where the balance comes in. Legal framework for inter interim relief. You've got a whole series of very detailed points. Everything that, as I said, if you're, if you're a Euro watcher or someone who's involved in this area, of law, and I, I actually read this for part of my bar exams, so I'm well well aware that what was European community law at that time, now EU law, was only just beginning, and I found it initially very confusing to try to understand how the referencing took place and everything else. Once you get into the swing of it, it's not too difficult, because we've got our own complexities in the common law. Anyway, thank you to all concerned, and thank you very much to Hart for sending us the book and for actually putting it forward as a publication. It's a great contribution to the continuing debate. Thank you. Bye-bye.